doing with the rhyme Or should I say continue The scientist is in you Science is what's with you So are you with me? Nothing is risky Let's create something nifty Okay, party paper Oh so, man This was so powerful when I started the part first The part one, the first part of it. You know how that's going Can be confusing Here's the deal. Mars. Fries. <coughs> okay. Second part. As I explained before, we have two hemispheres. The right one, the left one. And as I walk through the valley of death, I fear no evil. Because the illusion is the split between the two hemispheres. I play a word game to activate different structural thinking within you. So I'm saying the right brain is what's right and just. The left brain is what's left. Meaning those that cut themselves from the source, saying we can develop, go back to Atlantis technology that doesn't require the source. We you know, don't have to have the spirit of the source in that assisting spiritual technology. We will copy what's from the right side. You can say, Lemuria Atlantis is over here and we turned that into World War One, World War Two. we turned that into Maldek, we turned it into Mars. It's called radiogenesis, meaning the remembrance of a time loop that was created by us being effect, infected, <clears throat> in fact, by that creating that time, time loop. <clears throat> How that works, I'll explain to you now. Okay, the solution for the right and left hemisphere is what? that we become one brain again, okay? Completely wired, fully functional, that's the idea. Furthermore, hopefully you can see that, is we have the true mind, which is the infinite intelligence, and then you have the collective mind, which is the finite intelligence that thinks where the human race is going, that thinks it knows, and dabbles around with actually no big of any physical result showing us what actually the fact will be. So I'll give you a little bit of how I feel what the future will be. So I'll move around so you will see the tablets of Ra, okay? So we have, let's break that down, okay. So I already pre prepared that here. Um, you have when you take that mind apart, which we want to be, become a unimind, mind, it will become a hive mind because that's where how actually I think the universe has designed us. I looked at particles, particles. Um, the question also is, can a neutrino be a photon? They have both. I make it real simple for people that are not so scientific. I'm, I'm myself. I'm not a math geek. X, Y, Z, the unknowns and algebra and all this is just give me headaches because I need pictures. So I'm more pictorial here. So let's say a neutrino and a photon have two things in common. They both can pass through everything, and they're not bound by time. They will be under influence by time when the following thing happens. So here's my question, or my question. Can a neutrino be a photon? If not, explain to me why not. I will use that in my next video. Just an idea. Meaning is how does science determine a neutron, a neutron just because we don't see its effects? We deem it neutral because we don't see what it does, because we're not dealing in that dimension where actually it has an effect, where actually something is taking place, where there's no machinery being developed in that department. Soon will, let's assume that. So go back to the brain and how you perceive the world, okay? As the quantum computer. <clears throat> you have the polarity of the right and left hemisphere. Right is plus, left is minus. Don't get me wrong, both are needed to reestablish the connection. 
let's say this is your pineal gland you need this to be your triad so when the rest when this and this is balanced guess what happens to the rest it all balances when the pineal gland powers up and opens up and actually turns on your third eye which has a retina the pineal gland has a retina so you can receive photonic action without having the lens because the lens is different here so when you activate the oneness meaning the mediator between left and right is the pineal gland the pineal gland but there's a rule to it only turns on when left and right is in sync when it's balanced so they found out when shamans or super monks or these beings that are super trained or people that can go on crazy trips and balance their brain your brain you know has this thing over the skull you know kind of like the craniosacral formation here this entire thing is an oscillator. It's a generator. It's cosmic. It's intergalactic. It's not just epigenetics and based on 20 million years. You can go, go, you can go, go further. It would be preposterous to say how old your DNA is. When some theorists or scientists say that they have proven that our DNA is, of the human DNA, is 76 trillion years old, that the concept of that DNA that produces the one cell organism, you know, evolving into this. Don't get me wrong, I believe that the monkey is not the missing link. A monkey, key to man, I think is a neighbor. You know, like a parrot has these little birds that look like parrots, but they, they're like kind of smaller, you know, these domesticated ones. I don't know what they're called. And they, they found out, you know, Darwin was wrong. These are neighbors. They're not in the link as in one, two, three, four. No, they want the monkey went here and then Neanderthal, Cro-Magnon, there was a hybridization going on. Um, one species died out, and then there's another branch, and that's where the Homo sapiens comes in. Uh, let's say we are about to transform into the Neo sapien. That's what they call mutant. Okay, so we have left and right hemisphere. In a playful way, I give you a little bit of everything because I want you to investigate, study, Google, read for yourself, connect the dots so what i said before is the mission is to go into the right field from the negative field let's say the lower planes astral 4d 3d on down that takes place here okay <clears throat> when these two bodies become neutralized this field here is the zero field. So when we copy the bodies back and forth, by what, what I mean is the information, the, the light information that the electric body, the magnetic body, and the what is it, electric, magnetic, put it this way, etheric, magnetic, electric, I call it the EV body, when you find out it's you, it's like, ee, ee. I'm just, uh, I'm a cray cray. okay, the EV body, and I made that up because there's an idea to where this is going. So when the EV body, basically, is copied electromagnetically, etherically, through the zero field, what does that do to your concept, your thinking, your cell structure, everything that is a makeup that makes you with everything that you can possibly carry? Diseases or not diseases, things that affect you or things that will affect you is the following. Now check this out. So we have real quick. This is the human being. And the human being is connected. Let me give that one more space here. And I gotta put that up as so I remember what I'm talking about. This and this. The human
human being is connected ultimately to all other human beings on the planet, on some level. So not just three bodies. And let's say the connection is kind of dim. The connections that we have as humans as we interact are in the auric connections. And these auric eggs bleed into each other. So these auric eggs create something what we call timelines. Okay? A timeline, here's the theory, and I'm convinced that's actually is fact. So we can erase that here. A timeline has to do with like when Nikola Tesla invented the electric car over 100 years ago, it's in the, muse in the um, um, Technical Museum uh, of Berlin. Over 100 years ago, we already had a car that was run on a battery, okay? A lot of people didn't know that. That means the dude from the point to choice point where he receives the information from the ether, aligns that, brings that into physical form, guess what? That creates a timeline. That's all connected with everything that has to do with the influence of is that car being built? Is it invented? Tesla motors, we, we, have, we have plenty of cars that are hybrids that run electric and that influences that timeline. Or better yet, that timeline attracts these possible moments in time to that timeline, creating that timeline. Meaning the entire human race is influenced by that, okay? Very powerful. So if you have a very powerful invention that influences the timeline. The timeline is what, what's the preference with the timeline? Here's this, when the atomic bomb was invented. Okay? And when it was dropped on Hiroshima. Well, in your mind, first off, understand Earth is a dimensional, hyperdimensional planet that has many, many layers of spheres that we operate from into the infrared spectrum, beyond the infrared spectrum, we also know mathematically that there's a spectrum behind the infrared spectrum that goes into many, many layers, and that's so that goes into dimensions. So when you drop an atomic bomb or nuclear explosion, first off, you have to understand is on what scale of the force of creation are you? You're in the negative. You're working with destructive forces. You want to turn destructive forces into energy and the used pieces from the uh, reactor, you want to put them in a salt mine and think you solved the problem? I think not. Following reason why. People don't want to look at it. When you do this, you dent the layers in the dimension all the way to the outer dimensions. Why do you think we got ships here monitoring us? We're dangerous to other planets. Nuclear power spread to other Confederate planets and let's say for those that are in the knowledge, they are Confederate planets that are Earth-like. They know what we are doing, and we are in quarantine because of this, okay? They're looking at us like, when are they going to invent or reinvent themselves or remember actually who they are? And it has to do with consciousness. So when this dent was created, not only do you create something like which is called a solitone, <clears throat> a solitone wave, that's a split, okay? You split everything. Actually, every time you explode an uh, atomic bomb, you create duality. Every atomic explosion creates duality because you're splitting an atom. Atom, in the Egyptian text, what does atom or atomos mean? Atum, the core god of all the creation in Egypt. The Greeks took that atom this means, and it, to me it's funny the level of intelligence that we're working with when people are still working with this. Atom means which cannot be divided. You go into Egyptian texts that are not known, that I have read, books that are out on the market. I've been reading that stuff since I was 15, so I know a whole leap about genetics, a myth, and uh, the esoteric aspect of Egyptian culture. The, the dynasties and how the kings renamed themselves and blah, 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 blah. The essence of the storyline is this that I read that our tomb is which cannot be divided. And when you divide that, you raise all hell because you're creating a negative sun, basically. By destroying actually divine life, by how the matrix has designed it, 
meaning the Creator has designed that perfect. Okay? That is the perfect thing, that atom, with whatever you got running around that shit. I'm just giving you just roughs, okay? You can correct me left and right how you want. This is divinely correct. This is 360 degrees of pure creational force. You can't add or take away. You can combine and transmute and transform. One question is, why are we doing this? Why are we splitting this? Okay? That's like, you know, if you don't know how, if you don't know how this human understands, why not shoot it? And as we shoot it, like blow it up and then collect the pieces and body parts and let's try to find out where the soul is, which in my opinion does not work. It's like trying to crack open a typewriter and trying to find the author. There is no author. But somebody built the typewriter because there's a functionality behind it. So there's a divine matrix that there's a divine intelligence behind that. Scientists have taken viruses apart. One guy did that. I forgot his name. And he found out that the virus was actually built like a vessel, a nanobacteria, like a little ship, had these little plates here of metal going around had something like a turbine in here, all biologically, and within the thing, it had a plate of a counterpart within it, and it had this little spinner. And he found out by taking it apart that these are conductive plates that have magnetite within the cell structure, and they, they polarize to have that thing spinning kind of like this. So resu resulting in that parasite having actually a motor to drive to dock and change DNA and corrupt. So that's a design. Whoever is behind it, we can't even fathom. That's divine intelligence to us, okay? For those who want to learn about nanobacteria and how they influenced us and how that came in, um, I will give you a quick rundown. As I repeat, if you missed that, my theory is that the canyon needs to be connected. We have uh, keys in here, synaptic keys. Our science has proven that with uh, psychedelic mushrooms, that we have it within our synapses, in our brain, we have molecule connections that sit where the uh, receptors sit. And we have these T-like parts sitting where our receptors sit. And interestingly is when people take the mushroom, the mushroom bonds this way. Okay, let's get into the science. Don't do anything illegal. Don't do anything unlawful. You know, all stay within the confinements of science. Respectfully, knowing what you're doing. Study what you do, you know. It's like don't drive a race car if you don't have a license or if you're not equipped to drive a race car. So, meaning that the mushroom connects perfect. He, ha he has the counterpart to what the brain needs to synchronize. What does that do? I mean, you got to get into intelligence here. Like really, really like smart people understand, dumb people will resist and go like, mm -hmm, it's all bullshit. Well, they have proven that in clinical studies, if you want to read that book, The Spirit Molecule by Dr. Rick Strassman, very important. They found out that it synchronizes your brain, okay? That's why our ancestors in the Andes, in Peru and all that, take the, took these holy sacraments to stay in unison with nature, to stay connected. You have to understand, it was outlawed, all our ancestors got killed and murdered. The church said they are devil worshippers, they create, they talk talking to demigods, but yet they had people like such as a broken leg, and they said that the gods told them how to sing to the broken leg, you know, and when you know how to sing to a certain bone structure and a certain harmony, science, uh, university in Munich is studying that, the magnetic aspect around the bone marrow is, is changing, the alignment of uh, the, the calcium, the repair mode, everything in the body changes when you change the magnetic spectrum. They came up with the idea 
because <clears throat> they check the uh, magnetic flux and you do that with MRI of the body after that leg got healed and they found out there was a large radiation going on here which they deep uh, anomaly and unnaturally the leg was healed perfect so they almost couldn't find the crack in the bone there's a book that talks about people having the, the capacity to do that. It's called Dreamcatcher. My aunt read that. It's where a lady, I'll give you a fragment of that story, uh, went to the Aborigines to be taught in their ways. And uh, the, her camera guy broke the leg. And they laid the guy down and then they went, oh, I like it, I like it. and having these certain frequencies um, that have been recorded and that they're really checking out why is it that the body responds to that. They sang to the leg. And they said that we, we just sang the bone and into its memory where it was before it happened. That's why the leg healed. So that shows us <clears throat> there's no such thing as magic. There's science and the application of that and the physical result. Everything else is uh, psychological rhetoric. I'll give you a little analogy about where <clears throat> the illusion and, and uh, delusions of spiritual people can be. Let's say you in your truck Okay, you're on a highway to ascension, okay? All of a sudden your tire goes flat. flat. <laughs> so you're in 3D, you know the laws, your car is insured, you have a towing service, you call the people, they come along, they fix your tire, and off you go. See this as a metaphor, not literally, okay? Zing! You're well on your way. Your vehicle is your body. There comes a guru along who believes he's positive, he who believes he's spiritual. He does not know it. Comes along with his truck. Tire goes flat. <laughs> Has no insurance. Car not licensed. We all know it's draconian laws, this, that, the other, but there's a laws and rules and regulation that <clears throat> let's play along with them to have less ruckus transporting the vessel through this dimension. The dude gets out, hopes that somebody would come by and pick him up or help him to fix the wheel. I'm not going to extreme cases. I know somebody could um, come and pick him up or help him or whatever, but let, let's go into an extreme case, okay? Nobody's there. He's in the middle of the desert. There's no rescue. He didn't tell nobody where he's going. He takes the wheel off. You know, the flat tire sits there. He puts it on an altar type piece. You know, the car sits there. Flat tire. Nothing is moving. But he believes it is mind with his left field. All mentalized spirituality that somebody will come by one day to change the tire and pick him up and help him so he can be on his way of ascension. Well, right now he's sitting there, okay? First of all, the guy is looping. He's stuck in time. So interesting. Let that time loop take place of stagnation. Uh couple of thousand years other people pass by that truck that broke down they don't even really remember what a truck looks like they look at this thing and they're like I don't know what it is this here is a golden object now the golden flat tire that people worship and they go and guess what nothing happens they stuck in the concept of that guru that left off, these are his ancestors now, that it was to believe that the gods will return and they never return, and that somebody will come and fix his tire magically, and with his mind he could do make that happen. And guess what? Nothing ever happens. The golden artifact stays there till somebody comes, picks it up, puts it in a museum, puts it in a box. You know, people say this is what they pray to. We don't even know, we don't even remember what that is. The golden flat tire. And nothing moves. And this is where some people are stuck in spirituality. You know? You're assuming that healing will take place 
why somebody that you pray to might still on um, having cancer. It has to do with a great, great theory, uh, which I will unfold in a few, why I'm saying all this, you know. And if I'm wrong, you know, then you won't see me here anymore and I won't do that stuff anymore. And then I erase the channel and I will disappear. And I don't know, cut wooden, wooden dolls on some island. I'm serious. I'm serious. I'm not joking. This is some serious stuff. So, I get the stuff that I have from dreams according to what I read in reference. So, so let's say when we fell, when the split of the two hemispheres took place. You gotta watch Gamatron Teachings Part 1 where I explain that. You know, we used to be beings. This is all human consciousness. This is a human being, okay? We used to be in unison with nature, so we were connected like this, in sign waves, you know? Everything we had was a sign field. Everything was in harmony. The entire field was structured in harmony. So what happened in that organism of a hive mind, of the existence of human beings on the planet, Something came in here that was split. And the line that was transmitted was translated this way. And the next being picked that up, not even knowing what it's picking up. And the next being picked that up. And the collective consciousness got distorted <coughs> pardon me got diluted so we went from an entire see this is the morphogenetic field let's call it an energetic field or the scalar wave field people are biting their fingernails and beating themselves over what a scalar wave is. I have a theory of what that is. So this entire field up here is a mem social memory complex of the original human blueprint of what humans should be. I don't even think there's a book written about it. So when this split consciousness, and it started with one, one thought started doing this to us. Wars, calamities, pestilence, world wars, people not understanding each other, no telepathy, you know, no global communication, you know, consumer products, business, people were going to sleep, you know, I don't know, MTV, CNN, CBS, I don't know, PBS, whatever channels had, everything fell into this distortion. It fell into the slum, into the slumber, they fell asleep. So a few beings in here, which you call Buddha or Jesus, they had the ability to do this, harmonize the field a little bit and create a few what they call miracles, but it's all science, to extend their field to actually harmonize. Meaning within the distortion, they created harmonious fields, okay, saying they extinguished the fire. But it wasn't enough of holy dudes that we have creating that, dissolving that, you know, distortion. The field collapsed again, you know, we again caught in esoteric myth, you know. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta get real right now, you know. I, lo I love all the books and all the ancient stuff. But you have to be really radically thinking about reality right now as is. It has a reason. And I love all religions, all creeds, everything that has been created, okay? Allow yourself to say, don't put everything in the hands of the creator. Because the creator gave you a toolbox with everything in it to fix yourself. And when you step back from the toolbox and say, well, the creator will, will handle it, guess what? Nobody handles the tools, nobody handles the toolbox, nobody's going to fix 
a darn thing. The responsibility comes back to you as a human or you men being to getting here to remember to put back the pieces to understand or inner over outer and yeah inner over outer and understand the entirety of what that is to be an intergalactic citizen. So I talked about scalar waves and um, that's what I'm working with when I'm working with uh, my key design, the Gamatron key. Because what the Gamatron key is filled with is lab produced, and it's not cheap, nanospherical quartz sand. And not any substance, not sugar, not uh, um, the closest to that would be chalk, and that's only for agricultural aspects. But anything else does not have the capacity to store light. So within the nanospherical, that means nanospheres, very tiny balls, is a light isotope that looks like this. So what you do is you harness sunlight, okay? And you send it in here. And biophotonic imaging has proven that. Just people have been all over the place. Willem Reich over here, Nikola Tesla over here. I'm allowing myself to combine a few things and be smart with it. I have a theory. Again, hypothetically speaking. Only if I'm right. So this light isotope picks these waves up. Okay? These waves can be stored in here. After the pickup... The biophotons have been sent in here, and this light isotope has been changed. That's actually physical fact. That's not a theory, that's fact. Do that every day. You hit a crystal with a laser, and you change the entire light spectrum, the entire information. That can be measured. Again, biophotonic imaging, if you question that. Highly sensitive and complicated uh, way of uh, measuring the photonic output of a crystalline structure, silica based, if you want to. Okay? So, let's break down scalar wave. Let's say the scalar wave embodies nothing but pure and open and divine communication according to the divine blueprint. Meaning, if you put the right information in here, it begins to work for you. If you put the wrong information into the scalar wave, you actually diminish it and you actually, you kill it. You destroy the scalar wave. So first off, the scalar wave has to do with what your brain produces. Your silica based, your brain is magnetic, it has thermal influence, it's etheric, and it's electric, and everything can be measured. There's no magic. It's science. So let's say it's like frequency modulation, like radio, FM, okay? These are the waves that carry the signal, but the actual show that you're hearing, the Hot 97 or whatever it is, is here. New York, WBLS. I don't know, just make this up. In a class by itself. While the other stations play rhetoric, we talk live. Okay, this is the real divine information. So, first of all, there's a realm where your brain and your mind can tune into this. That's where channeling takes place. The higher the bandwidth, the better the signal. You know, FM, then you have AM, you know. In TV, you have UHF and VHF, vertical high frequency, ultra high frequency. No, there's a lower bandwidth, yes, and there's a higher bandwidth. So let's say the higher bandwidth is where the angels talk, the councils, it's the Orions, the Syrians, um, 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 the Andromedans, the, the Vegans, um, the Cassiopeians, the Pleiadians, the Arcturians, um, 
and many, 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 many more. I'm just giving you the commercial ones. So this is the scalar wave. The scalar wave is the carrier wave for the actual informational wave that can be created. I call that wave the Swain wave. Okay. Just so it has a name when you find out I'm making sense. Again, hypothetically speaking. But I guarantee you, you will see progress to what I'm showing you here. Because this is going to get interesting if you have an open mind and open heart to see divinely where we're going. So, it's a little bit complex and hoping I'm making sense. So what I want to do is, let's say the human body is surrounded by scalar waves. And the human body has its own scalar field. That is very important. Some, I don't know, maybe in five years we'll have a machine that can actually measure scalar waves. This has to do, has to do with the original light information that the body emanates. Coming from the heart, creating a toroidal field. And we're trying to replicate that actually. We're trying to replicate us. And anything and everything that we are building, we're trying to replicate ourselves. Okay. Now, this is, looks like an angel, you know? Interesting. Or well, let's say, you know, I don't have all the solutions, but I have ideas. Let's say you're living in your house and you're being bombarded by satellite, 60 hertz coming from your plugs in your home, 110 volts. Your body is not actually grounded. It's supposed to be grounded, you know? So you can't recalibrate and tune this thing because you can't reflect on a scalar wave that has actually the natural information of your avatar body, okay? So what, you are sick, you're depressed, you have fatigue, you have insomnia, you have all the symptoms that everybody in this great Western civilization has. You also have what they call cognitive dissonance. That means I utter an idea and somebody says, that is all, you have an emotional reaction to knowledge being taught, even divinely knowledge, and you want to shut it up, not hear it, not watch it, but yet you're watching it so you can comment. Cognitive dissonance. That means your brain is locked to a uh, distortion level of acidity where you feel comfortable and you run that program or the program runs you. That makes you tick so you have a response to something that has to do with a distortion because distortion comes from when somebody, you know, you get gray hair, you get wrinkles and all this, you age. It's not a not natural process. Get over it. Study the Hayflick switch. Google it. Wikipedia it. Hey, Dr. Hayflick has found out that the DNA has been manipulated thousands of years ago to switch off, to make you grow old, to, to grow all of the weird stuff. And he has checked um, in reference to that cancer cells and they are immortal. We are not. Then ask yourself, well, why is a disease not coming with that DNA switch off, but the human DNA has a switch off? Because it's been designed. It's been so old that you don't remember it's been designed. But it's okay. We're here to solve that now. Hey flick switch, H A Y F L I C K. Check that out. So, the body is a resonator. We are resonating love beings. We are responding to frequency. So, let's say a baby growing up next to the highway, next to where the planes come down. If it's not super super healthy, it's going to be very disturbed because it gets bombarded with all the noise in the world. Uh, maybe you are living under uh, an electric tower. In Germany, they have these very high towers with very powerful electric voltage that hits the house. And, and, and Germans, without being even superstitious, know that preferably they don't even want to live in that area because they get sick, you know. Take a Geiger counter. It's, I don't know, between $100 and $200. Measure your own frequency in your house. Measure the radiation that comes from your microwave. Measure the radiation that comes from your smoke detector because it has a microbe of uranium in there to detect even smoke. So you have you you're installing radiation into your house. You're nuking food 
with nuclear radiation. The radion that is in the microwave nuclear radiates your food to get the molecules to balance so your food is hot. Meaning, in five minutes, all nutritional values are being destroyed. In Russia, microwaves are outlawed. Check for yourself. Get your information. No longer can we say, well, I don't know about this. This, uh, um, this is the age of Aquarius. It means it's the age of knowledge. Going back to, with emphasis, my idea is I want this body to become whole again. Holy doesn't mean you're to be worshipped or you're a saint. Holy means that the cells actually function according to the original divine blueprint. And there is a divine blueprint. If you check the Holy Scriptures, you check the Nakamadi papers, you check the Bhagavad Gita, and you go into the essentials. These books don't cover everything, but they cover millions of years, hundreds of thousands of years. Um, interestingly, it's one of the ages, what they call the Kali Yuga, has 432,000 years, I, I, I think. Maybe days, I might be wrong. I'm thinking it's 432,000 years. That comes with the 432 hertz. If you're still confused about center frequency and the next frequency, the 528, check 532 in relation to 528. Yeah, yes, and there are more frequencies. That These are just two frequencies. There's much, much more. So, I have the theory that if we can find something that can reflect the scalar wave in a very, very high frequency, and I give you a hint, I'm not giving you everything. Let's say it's 10 to the 15. Okay, let's come and solve. A photonic light spectrum, 10 to the 15th, meaning... I'm coming from dimension 15. I'm over 12. Lisa Renee said on her website, uh, it's called S -S Synergetics or something. Um, if you want to study her, very interesting what she has to say. Let's say everything between 1 and 12 is corrupt. It has to do with the 12 archetypes. It's all to be a science. It goes back to the human body. So let's say I give light spectrum a 15-fold. 10 to the 15-fold sending it out to the original here. First of all, you can't even imagine, I'm sending light from the dimension 15, okay? So a lot of claims, I have no proof. This is a feeling. This has to do with resonance and energy. The light comes from here, which say, let's assume that's clean. Let's say when somebody goes to a hotel and you, you look around, you say that's clean, and you say, well, that was room 15. Well, room 15 was very clean, okay? We check that out, okay? So the light information that comes from this realm and the scalar waves that come from this realm are now being translated into a device that, ooh, man, I'm getting the chills. You don't even you know any idea. This, I feel like a pioneer here. Pioneer, fine here. Okay, so in a divine way, very high frequential, we bring that to a device, a conduit that exists on earth, okay? It, ha it wants to be found. It's simple, it's all over the place, but since we're so fragmented, we're not really combining that stuff. So if you, first of all, if you tune into this, Get your mind, sit down and meditate. Tune into dimension 15. Just tune into it to complete your, your connection. You'll get ideas that will be like, whoa. <clears throat> Put it to work. Turn yourself into a genius. <clears throat> Patrick Flanagan has proven when your brain oscillates on 40 hertz. I'm just combining a few. This is Hank Wesselman, his books. And then Flanagan, meaning your brain usually does 13 hertz, like, it's like this, whoop, 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 whoop. That's when you're active. I'm doing about probably right now 20 because I'm streaming. Um, I'm connecting to the higher realms of my existence and whatever I have in the highest form for the highest probable outcome to actually energize you, okay? So that's why I'm, I'm coming with energy. It's beyond motivational coaching. I'm trying to really activate into you, allow yourself to see what I'm actually showing you here. So in a couple of years, it's going to be like, yo, homeboy, you're not doing yo. 
Six years ago, I thought the dude was completely nuts. And look what we got right now. That's exactly what he was talking about. And that's no claim and no noble, noble price or nothing. It's hard work and you look like a nutcase. But I think I'm very rational and very conservative when I do this. So, okay, we're bringing from dimension 15 light into a conduit that can translate a scalar wave into our world, which exists on the lower bandwidth. But we can connect and bring that in knowing how to connect the elements. So that conduit is this. Let me just let that be material X. And let that be material X, Y, Z in connection with how do you work with that? What is your intent? How do you, as a human being, you're in here, the scientist, how does your conduit receive that and translate that? Very important. If that doesn't work here, you have nothing. Meaning people replicated Tesla's power generators according to his plans and they turned the, they switched the button and let's lose, use your in intuition. Guess what happened? Right, it didn't turn on. Why you know this? First off, because you're intuitive. Now I explain to you why it didn't turn on. Tesla had formed an intent in his mind. So did Wilhelm Reich and many, many others that had these magical apparatuses that disappear and all the, and all the conspiracy and all that stuff. Y'all don't want to get into that because it's kindergarten. We're talking about development, not toddler stuff. The intent was in unison with what was channeled. That's why Tesla's machines and free energy worked. People laugh about it. You go back into the ancient text. It was the initiate priest that would turn on the pyramid. And if you were not divinely right, you would lose your mind. Napoleon tried it, tried to sleep in the center of the pyramid, ran out of there, almost lost his mind, got scared to... <sighs> because if you not initiated by yourself and your own spiritual maturity, you activate nothing. Because you have to embody the certainty of that this will work. And having to do with bank accounts from lifetimes and other lives... Man, I'm getting stuff here. I'm just getting this right now. Ooh, um, other lives where you did that before. And your mission is actually to come here to co correct a time wave, to make it correct. And some of us have that mission and it is hard, hard work because everybody laughs at you. They laughed at Tesla and the dude could create rain clouds and people got spooked. Nothing spooky, it's science. It is knowledge, knowing, know the ledge, understanding. The process, not having to believe it, but being able to experience that, that it can take place. Okay, this gets very complicated, but I hope you can follow me. So, party people. Dimension 15. Yeah? We're coming here in a conduit that was, what was, that was received by a divine mind. That mind was already, you can say, linked to the 15th dimension. He already had an access because the translation reached him. That's why he could channel that. That doesn't make you supreme. That makes you actually, you know what, what we do with these people? We kill them off, we put them on a cross, or you're healing, or witchcraft. We ban people. Every time somebody wants to come with something that can actually help, we are laughed at, we are bombarded, we are destroyed. That's the level of consciousness where the human race is. No blame, no blame, but um, have the awareness and some people are mean and some people are not mean. It has to do with the, the mean people are in a certain distort, level of distortion that they keep because they think that is where, what life is and what life's about when actually that's a great illusion. These people won't be in economic power. They don't want any big businesses. They don't, want, they don't, they don't delegate anything big where any big change will take place uh, coming from them because they are still stuck in their distorted mind and their distortion. So here's the idea. When you come from these lifetimes as a priest, as a scribe, as a warrior, uh, Merlin times, Jesus times, whatever, 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 however you're related or wherever you're on the planet you, you may be, and I, I think there's a lot of beings that have lived that. You come down here, you receive this information, you bring forth something that actually will have a physical effect on the human body. That brings me to the conclusion of the theory that I'm having. And I guarantee, like I said, you know, when I say these words, I say these words 
because you will see progress. I'm deciphering that within myself, nothing needs to be built. Just look at stuff that's already being built. And then when I find something that works, um, then I can guarantee, I'll guarantee progress in whatever shape or form is taking place. One of the progresses that I even need to guarantee is that Walmart, Walmart has included in their products scalar wave bracelets to activate the human body. So we are beginning to get it. It's trickling in from every angle. I'm just part of the wave that has a little bit of explanation. So let's say, you know, in part one, I described that you have the human body and the human body has certain malfunctions because they operate on a lower dimensional scale. Meaning they have scalar waves that run programs that actually like free radicals that really, really do not support you, really do not work for you. So let's say we can put that body in connection, however, with that module that reflects that time and that timeline and the possibilities and timelines coming from that dimension 15, this is just a reference number. From there on, you can go higher if you know what you're doing. So going in here and hitting that body with that time wave. I believe that body's molecules have these dimensions already in them. And they will know how to respond to that time wave. I call that the gammatron sequence, which is the correctional frequency of the metatron sequence. And it'll actually yeah, to conclude this video, so we have a, a, an hour roughly now, is basically correcting the time wave patterns in that body, which is a universal platform and beats any, uh, any supplement that can ever be taken because it's a universal platform that connects the all, unifies everything, brings everything together. Not only have a device that hits that body, have a device that creates that time flux that hits your house with everything that's around you even the food that you eat gets hit with that and you return that back to the body and better yet encase that and keep that in a way that it gets reflected back to the body from all possible directions to correct the time wave and the time flow I believe it's better yet. I'm certain. And listen to this when I'm saying this. I keep repeating that. I am certain that once you hit the correctional frequency from a cell from a 15th dimension to a cell that has dimension 15 in it, but it's not activated, it's dormant with the junk DNA that has to do with time wave patterns and timelines that are dormant that we don't even know about because we don't even go into metaphysics. We don't study metaphysics and science. I say I'm combining science and metaphysics. Metaphysics, right brain. Factual science, left brain. That needs to communicate. Okay? So when that communicates, we can heal. If you have a conduit that can bring that information into here, my talk ends. I don't have to convince anybody. Right now I'm talking through filters and distorted lenses of ment mental overlays, trying to perceive what I'm, what I'm saying. Some that are in resonance more with the right brain probably will see why I'm at. We can measure if your brain is in coherence with your heart. That, that wave is called 13 hertz. That means when somebody says, well, I'm in my heart, well, it can be measured if you're in your heart. And guess what? They found out that over 75% people believe that they're in their heart, but they don't have the coherent frequency. They're still mentalizing spiritual concepts. They're not embodying that. And we want people to give, the, give them the experience. You have to really get into science and embody that spiritual being, that you are spiritual, that you know who you are. So part one is, as I'm starting with my theory and my key, the 22 dimensions with that, which I explained, have the nanospherical quartz sand, and in theory, I'm translating a scalar wave, 
which in my opinion is not electromagnetic. It influences that. It is light, the purest light that you can imagine. So that shall heal the body and influence the body to tune into higher frequencies, give you better dreams, better understanding, and even understand what I'm trying to say. So quintessential, what we're trying to do in the future is take the human body, that's the best meditation, and I want to do a meditation video on that too. Take the human body out of every known concept to man. Any paradigm that you have learned, you are trained, cultural program, everything that you grew up with, whether it's the Bible, the Torah, the Bhagavad Gita, the Nahamadi, uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls, um, the Sumerian tablets, any storyline that's connected to a distorted timeline that you remember actively with your left brain that's based on memory, that links with cells that have cell memory to that distorted timeline, traps you in that, in the same principle, with everything there is. So even if you watch CNN and you watch something about war and the occurrence that happened in the 70s and let's say the Cold War, you are linked to the 70s in the emotional body that was programmed in the 70s, responds to that, and guess what? Your body time travels back to the 70s and you trapped in the same quarantine zone. You're not getting out. That has to do with inside internal mechanisms and no book teaches about that maybe i put this all in a book so to finish this is to when i meditate i do something like this when i completely disappear and what do you see here when i disappear what do you see you'd say a whiteboard but what do you see beyond that whiteboard what's here nothing that's very important like in the Matrix, when Morpheus explains the program construct where everything can be uploaded, we have to go into the void and not be afraid of that. And lose everything. Lose your personality, lose yourself, lose your mind, any conceptual thinking of what you think that you are. And become just. I am what I am. I is what I is. So... When that happens, you're actually linking to the higher mind. We call that the infinite intelligence. Unhindered. Healing modalities are all levels, like magic to you because you don't understand the science. Once you understand it, once you know how the magician does his tricks, it's not magic to you, you know how he's doing it, good entertainer. So the idea is with developed healing modalities and platforms, you can change matter. Not only the human body, you could change in theory the radiation levels in your house, the nuclear radiation can be deleted because there's an opposite to that. You know, there's nuclear radiation and there is light radiation, positron, positive, you know, photonic, light emanating, light enhancing, life accumulating, life enhancing. So you have a destructive force, D, and a creative force. There's always opposites. So if that's found and put together, then yeah, you can heal on all levels. You can influence the, the fuel consumption of your car by changing the light spectrum. If you know how to communicate that, if you know how to communicate with the higher dimensions, which is necessary within you and without you. So it's in part you and it's in part not you. There's a divine intelligence behind everything that's in creation. You call the creator. Do not personify. Don't make it a he or she or whatever. It's, it just is. The question is, we have to ask ourselves, is what is our planetary service? What are we doing for the planet? What are we doing in our craft actually to develop something that can change something? Here's one of the miracles that I have witnessed and that guy has created something that's called idol water and check the video, has a thousand hits, nobody watches it. He watched it, how long does nature need to transform oil into chlor chlor chlorophyll and, and proteins in the settlements of the earth? Well, 10 million years. So the guy, and I believe he channeled that, found out one of my water has a level of pH 13. I can do that in six minutes. He was laughed at, but now he has videos where he takes motor oil, pours it in the streets, sprays it called Aqualix or Aqua Helix, sprays it on there, mixes it. He even eats that stuff and turns oil into chlorophyll and protein that he can actually 
He puts it in a water tank, puts his solution in there, mixes it, and white protein, thick like this, drops in the water tank. He grabs it, puts it in a glass, and feeds it to the fish, and they eat it. So a process of 10 million years, check the fractal and the development, put into six minutes, and he's changing that. Ido, Ido Water, his, I think his name is Ayran, Doryu Aran, I don't know, it's a Turkish guy, sits in Switzerland, has a little, little investor. He even showed, like we had this great uh, forest fire in Sedona, how we can prevent that. And I might sound like an idiot, and I give this at, in the end, you know, when you use that alkaline water, it makes stuff inflammable. So let's say your fire burns into that direction. And I'm not a fireman. Every fireman can, you know, say something to that. You drop fire in the fire zone, you know, to, to kill it. But it's not really doing anything if it's like a thousand acres. If you know or you can predict the wind goes in a certain direction and you give your fireman a headroom not to be in the fire zone, outside of the fire zone, and you would spray the woods with alkaline idle water, you would make the woods literally inflammable. And I know in the world it hasn't been done. So any fire department or people that want to study that, investigate, contact the guy, he's producing that. We can produce that here. I wish the helicopters that took off that I saw could actually pump that fluid and fly over there and drop that alkaline water. And he showed that he sprayed a tree with that alkaline water, which evaporates. And then he set everything around the tree on fire. The tree did not burn. Not magic, it is science. And if we apply science, we get smarter. And on that note, thank you for listening to Gamatron Teachings Part 2. And I guarantee you there's progress. Whether it's me or somebody else, I will report it and I will be about it. I hope you have an understanding of what I was trying to relay to you. And, um, pardon me. Uh, what about this? Okay. Oh, the sneezer was coming on. So, yeah. The true mind, the collective mind, scalar wave, the swain wave. And really allowing yourself, there are things out there that sound unbelievable. You can even order that and test it yourself. Um, that actually took, take place. And if I find something with physical evidence, then my theory must have a foundation to be right. And then the storyline continues, and from there, we will grow. So thank you for the pioneers that listen to me and grow with me, because I'm just allowing myself what Tesla didn't have YouTube, uh, Wilhelm Reich didn't have YouTube, so I'm, I'm, I'm seeing myself as in, in that department, all of these geniuses, Patrick Flanagan, uh, Vern, Vern Wolf, or Vernon Wolf, and many, many, many more, David Wilcock, Greg Braden, you, you name it. Brilliant, brilliant ideas. Another book that I'd like to recommend is The Lost Modality of Prayer, of what it actually means is to embody prayer. And as a, a, an explanation, yeah to end this video with, with something phenomenal is when they study natives when they do the rain dance and again i'll always go back to before people criticize when all the natives got slaughtered and wiped out by you know the immigrants here's what they do they dance 180 degree in this way then they dance 180 degree in this way yeah and then they dance 360 degrees this way. Hopefully the direction of pattern is correct. And then they say, when you pray for rain, what do you actually do? Are you praying for rain in your mind? Or what are you praying to? They don't pray. What they do is they remember what it feels like when the rain falls on their skin. So they get into the resonant frequency of what, the, what does it feel like when it rains. You also, also have to have the experience of felt to replicate that. And they say that makes the spirits in the sky dance with us. And when we dance with them, they dance this dance. 180, 180, 360. And it's like dang, 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 wang, wang, dang, dang, wang, wang, dang, dang. Like imagine this going this like real, real fast. My guess what they found out what water molecules and rain clouds do when they get heavy before it rains. They're dancing that dance. And on that note, leave your mind open for possibilities and the greater things in the universe. 
It's miraculous when you get into the science, into the knowledge of what they can actually do. Thank you so much. More to come and any other example that I'll find, I explain that to you. Um, ah, one more story. Ah, yeah, I got these. Um, I read that online. I don't know the blog, so I don't have a link because that was years ago. There was um, um, a twins were born, um, a boy and a girl, and uh, the boy was dying, and he was in the uh, what do you call that the the incubator, the, the, the encasement, and they tried to keep the boy alive. And his life signs were fading, and they said we, we probably are not able to save that little boy. The sister, healthy, strong, laying next to him like in another room. So, talking about divine communication. So, the sister that sat there and worked at the night shift saw that and knew the boy was dying. And I almost get emotional talking about it. I have to really keep myself together. This is like we need to open up again and believe that we are so magnificent, that we are great beings. We can do great things. It's beyond any religion, beyond any my book says or your prayer. It's, it's about what is, understanding what is without adding a storyline because the ego wants a storyline. So the sister gets up by intuition, maybe hears a voice, I don't know, walks into the next room, gets the baby sister. She risks to lose her job and everything. Moves the little baby out of the um, crib. Opens the incubator. Puts the little sister next to the boy. The little sister by intuition puts her arm around the boy. And the sisters on the display with the life signs and the heart rate. They pick little boy is alive today and that saved the little boy and doctors cannot explain that phenomenon that has to do again divine cell resonance and scalar wave communication they were protected enough that the little sister brought the boy back to life and only the healthy organism brings back healthy organisms Jesus said that look at everybody talking their rhetoric you will know who's who by the fruits of their labor you investigate is that product good is that doing anything for me or is that not doing for me if you don't have numbers or marketing schemes or whatever it is trust in your divine resonance what you're resonating with thank you so much this is actually very very great for me and a relief that i could share this with you and um i see you on the flip side when the gamatron teachings continue